What is going on guys, Jack Knight 5 Gaming here and I'm back with episode 36 of my West Ham United Next Gen Career Mode. As you can see guys, we do kick off the episode with Leon saying that they're not going to match the price that we did set for Jerry Jimenez, which is fair enough, you know, he's a great player and I don't really want to see him go, so um, that's a win-win situation. And we do go into a Barclays Premier League game against Liverpool now, playing on kind of a weakened side there. Timo Werner does come into the side, Henry Lansbury, Danny Ings is into the team too, so it should make out to be a mouth watering prospect, you know, Luis Eduardo's in the team in a 3-5-2 formation. Liverpool, a bit of a bogey team for us, you know. They're only four points behind us in the win here can really see him come back and um, kind of like haunt us really so we need to be on top of our game and we need to be on the form of our lives obviously they've signed Pogba which is a fantastic signing for them um, you know you've got the likes of Danny, Benzema, Suso that can cause all kinds of problems you know quality players and in the seventh minute it would be Benzema that does pick up the ball here from a free kick plays it into the head of Paul Pogba and produces a fantastic save there from a Republic of Ireland goalkeeper Henderson in the eleventh minute though poor defending here from Liverpool does um, like, come away with Henry Lansbury uh, resulting in getting the ball um, it is tackled but falls to the arm it plays it into Timo Werner it plays it into the path of the Portuguese man Ricardo Vazte it takes the shot and it's a great save there from Pepe Reina to keep the game um, all square. As you can see though, the ball does get passed out and it's a poor pass into the path of Momo the Diame. The Diame picks up the ball here, the Diame plays it into the path of um, Stefan and Beer, plays it into Danny Ings and the Englishman takes a shot from range and it's a good save from the Spanish goalkeeper Pepe Reina there who's in for the injured Simon Mingale actually. So, um, good good confidence booster there from us and good confidence booster for um, Booster for Reina, who's in goal and obviously needs needs that. And it's a 15th window, Timo Werner picks up the ball here. Um, great little bit of a uh, speed for him down that wing. Picks up the ball here, crosses it into the path of Adan Yanuzai, takes the shot first time and it just blazes over the bar there. Um, it did come a little bit close, you know. I mean, if it was a little bit lower, it would have had a Pepe Reina stretching, I believe, but it just goes way over there and, you know. You know, it's not going to cause any troubles. But in the 22nd minute, though, we do pick up the ball with Mario Diamond, flicks it into the path of Ricardo Vazte here, plays it into the path of Henry Lansbury. Lansbury onto the ball now. Lansbury running out of the goal, takes the shot, and it nearly takes a cruel deflection. Actually, no, it doesn't take deflection. It looked like it took a deflection, but it was I think it was a, a mistimed shot that just, mishit shot that basically just caused a goalkeeper for, um, you know, it, it was dipping. It was dipping, and the goalkeeper had to uh, be a little bit wary there, but unfortunately, the game still remains at nil nil. Uh, Yano uh, um, actually no, great play here from Jose Enrique. Now, Jose Enrique plays the ball down into the path of Danny. Look at this football here from Liverpool. Plays it back into Jose Enrique. Plays it into the path of um, Frenchman Karen Benzema. He flicks it back into the path of Jose Enrique. Enrique takes it down, and he really should be making that 1 0. The former Newcastle man and the Spanish international, um, well, no, actually, he's not a Spanish international, the Spanish man. Um, just drags that shot wide and really should have put um, that Liverpool the cop one 0 up there. It's the 37th minute though. Diame picks up the ball here with Adan Januzaj onto the ball. Sees the part of the run over Timo Werner and sticks it into the path of the German, the young German town. Takes the ball down and check this out. Timo Werner with an absolute bullet goal into the top corner there. Out of um, Jose Reina's reach, you know Pepe Reina is nothing to do about that. And we do strike just a few minutes before half time there, and it is through the German one, the kid Timo Werner. And it was a great goal, you know. He took the he took the ball there just with ease. Agger and Skirtle just couldn't come to him. He took the pop ball past Kelly too easily, and it's it's a crisp finish into the top corner. You know, you can't. It's undeniable. It was a really good finish, and we're going to be absolutely pleased with that. You know, the team are playing fantastically, and like I said, I'm happy with the team, and I'm happy with the way they're playing. So. No, keep playing like this. You know we could get a shock win against Liverpool here. Obviously Liverpool, you can never count them out with like Benzema, Pogba, Danny, and Suso in the team. You know they're always going to cause trouble. But at the moment we've been dominating, we've been looking comfortable, and that's one goal in the Barclays Premier League for Timo Werner who's just come in. It's a 45th minute though. Pogba does pick up the ball here from a corner for Liverpool. Uh, right on half time, here, the ball does come into Daniel Agger with the header, but it's an easy enough save there for Stephen Henderson and keeps the game that 1 0 going into half time. Into the second half though, um, Pogba does pick up the ball here for Liverpool and he's running with the ball. He's got tons of space. You can't give Pogba that tons of space. It falls to the Brazilian Coutinho. Coutinho on the ball, plays it into the path of Paul Pogba, takes a first time shot, looking to get his Premier League goal and um, his tally up there since joining Liverpool, but unfortunately it just goes wide there. Into the 73rd minute here, uh, Martin Kelly on the ball yet again. Um, some poor defending here from uh, Henderson who plays the ball into Timo Werner who runs through on goal here takes the shot and again it's a good save there from Pepe Reina to keep the game at 1-0 obviously it was a well-timed shot there from Werner but the goalkeeper saw it um, all along and you know he's always going to be making that save there but we're still testing the goalkeeper uh, and that was our first chance really in the 73rd minute in the 83rd minute though we did put the ball in here from a corner from Vazte and it was the German man it's been the German show really Jonathan Tyler gets his head on to that and makes it doubles our lead and makes it 2-0 and basically wrapping up the three points you know, with seven minutes left to go it's not looking likely that Liverpool can get um, two goals back but what a fantastic header there from um, Jonathan Tarr and the German does get on the score seat along with his um, maybe he's under 21 um, well, yeah, he's under-21 um, national team mate, 
uh, to Moana. So two goals in the Bucks Premier League there, and it's well played from the boys there. 88 minute though, Jarman picks up the ball, plays it into Timo Werner yet again, who's uh, having such a great game. Flicks the ball into the path of Danny Whitehead, who has come on as a sub. A missed time header from Skull falls into the path of Danny Whitehead, and a 21 year old blasts that ball into the top corner there. And the young man, um, the, the academy prospect, does put the ball into the back of the net, obviously. Um, Danny White had a fantastic player, I really do enjoy him. Blair Turgot obviously onto the pitch too, so it's really good to see some of our youth players come out and really shine in this game. Uh, Timo Werner, Tart and Danny White all scoring, all under the age of 21 too. So, um, you know, it's, the future is definitely looking bright. You know, um, three youth players striking against a team like Liverpool, you know, a team that are aiming for European football, that is really good to see. And Danny White, you know, just a well timed, tidy little finish down to the back in there. And he does make it 3 0 and he does wrap up the three points in this one, so. Very well played from the team there, you know. You really can't discredit them. We have been, we've just been fantastic. Um, it's, it, you know, there's no easy way to say it. We've just actually just been fantastic. You know, the team have just had a, such a great performance there. And Danny White does get his first goal in the British Premier League just just before the game end. And the game does actually come to an end there. And it is a massive 3-0 victory here for the Hammers against the Cop. Um, you know, Tar Werner and Whitehead, you know, it could have been the German show, but the English had to come in and ruin it. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's always a bit of a laugh there. 3-0 for the team, and that's fantastic play. As you can see, Inter do come in for a bid for Jerry Menezel for 8.5 million. You know, a team obviously I'm doing my career mode with. They will have a kind of a soft spot for him, but I do say 14.5 million, and maybe I will consider Menez going out. But we do have a massive game here, the Capital One Cup semi-finals. Obviously, I believe we're 4-2 up on aggregate at the moment. But, um, you know, QPR are a very strong team and they can cause us a lot of trouble here. So we need to be on top of that game. Uh, we'll get to see the, um, the bracket here, to see what teams are going through into the final. And it is, at the moment, looking like it is going to be Bolton that we're going to meet in the final here. So it could be an interesting one at Wembley come, come um, in January. Actually, no, February, sorry. As you can see, QPR line up with the likes of uh, Remy, Park, Hoylet can all cause trouble, you know. Um, falling in the team, he's, he's a good player, and Diakita really hold the team together. In the eighth minute, though, QPR obviously looking to get an early goal here with it being 4 2 in aggregate. And uh, Simpson does win the ball here from a throw in, it flicks it into the path of Remy, a poor defensive header there. Um, just forced the junior Hoylet really into his path, and he does actually scramble the, the ball home to make it 1 0 QPR at, in, front of the, in front of the Loftus Road faithful. And he's going to be absolutely delighted with that. It does make it 4 3 in aggregate now, and uh, you can you just Keep our back in with a shout now, you know, no doubt about that. But we always do have really good games. And in the top minute, we're looking to strike back straight away. Fernando on the ball, bit of good footwork there for him to keep the ball under his control. Plays it into Sebastian Roda, who gets past this man too easy there, runs through the gap of defence and just, uh, lets loose a shot. And actually does put, bring us level there in the 14th minute with a 1 1 goal equaliser there from the German Sebastian Roda. And a bit of motion takes over there from him. And he does put the game back to 5 3 on aggregate now. And we do have that two goal cushion yet again. But it's very well played there from our man. Look at this. This takes the ball down so easily. And Rhoda, you know, he's been a player that has showed up quite a, quite a bit this season, you know. Uh, don't get me wrong, he has been a great player for us. And, you know, with goals like that, he's really going to be just a menace to stop. So, great play from him there. You guys really can't argue with that. He just took the ball down with so much ease. And, you know, the Germans are catching with another goal. But with the likes of Oscar arriving next season, it could have given me selection dilemma, you know. I don't think Fernando's going to go back to the team, but Ravel and Sebastian Rhoda have got to really give me um, something to um, think about here, and they really are. And that's his third goal in the competition. In the 90th minute, though, Menez has picked up the ball here, flicks it into the path of Christian Venteke, our, uh, our star man, really. Uh, he flicks it into the path of, I believe, Morrison, but he just can't get there. But it's showing that we are showing intent of going forward here, so that's really good. Bakai then picks up the ball here in the 24th minute and flicks the ball into the path of um, Benteke with the header, but it's an easy enough save for the Brazilian goalkeeper, Julio Cesar, there. In the 32nd minute, uh, Remy picks up the ball yet again, tries to flick the ball in, but it does get actually cancelled that. It falls to fall in, though. Good little turn there from the Argentine, flicks it into the path of Glenn Thomas there, and uh, he just pokes the ball underneath um, Adrian too easily, and actually does make it 2 1 um, QPR, and the game actually now at, I believe, 5 6 5, I do believe. So, no, 6 4. No, 5-4. I can't even get it sorted there. 5-4 the game is. Uh, but in the 41st minute, we do strike back. No, we look to strike back straight away there. But Fernando just can't put the ball into the back of the net there. And a Brazilian man can't score against his Brazilian counterpart. But on half time, we do pick up the ball here with Bacale. Um, it does get cleared away from his pressure. It does fall into the path of Christian Mateca. It takes the ball down and just wallops that at Julio Cesar. But it's a great save there from the Brazilian goalkeeper. Yet again, to deny the Belgian man a goal against QPR here. He took the ball down with ease. Takes the shot, but it's a good save there from Cesar. I can't take nothing away from it. And the game still remains 2-1 on the night. And 5-4 in aggregate. But Jerry Menez does line up the ball here. The man that's been uh, the centre of the transfer market at the moment. He puts the ball in and it is a Stephen Corker header to make it 2-2. And uh, give us that two-goal cushion yet again in this game. Right on half-time. That's going to be a major for QPR, I think they're going to go in at the break with the goal there, but um, 
no, they're not going to go in with the lead and they're not going to go in with an advantage, you know. Uh, obviously, with the lead, they would have had that one goal cushion. Like, we would have had that one goal cushion, and Cuba would have been pushing and pushing. But, you know, they've fallen apart at set piece, and that could be their downfall. You know, that's another two goal cushion they got to um, claw, them, claw themselves back from. I just can't see it happening now, you know. Um, never write QBR off. They are a team that can get goals, and they've just proven it here. They've got two goals in the first half, so who says they can't do it again? But the defence has let them down, and. You know, just as easy as that, we could come back and hurt him yet again. As you can see, Stephen Corker gets his second goal in the Cup One Cup, and that's his second goal in this episode here. So Stephen Corker, a man in form at the moment. Um, actually, no, it's not his second goal in this episode. I don't know what I'm saying there. It was Jonathan Tyler got the first one. In the 63rd minute, though, um, QPR come close yet again there with a chance, um, I believe, from Adele Tarrat, but it just um, goes wide there from the uh, Moroccan. Fernandez picked up the ball in the 71st minute, running away from goal, takes the shot. I mean, running towards goal. What, what is going on with me? Um, and then Bacali with a follow up header, which is a good save there from Julio Cesar and Cupid. I eventually do get the ball clear. Last 15 minutes now, um, Cupid pick up the ball here with Adele Tarrat, plays it into Park of Jisong Park. Uh, Danny Simpson plays it um, into Park yet again. Uh, Park, great little bit of football there, plays it into Esteban Granero, plays it into the path of Lloyd Remy, who does actually see the ball home to make it 3 2. It's going to be an interesting last 13 minutes into this game. Um, obviously, now the, goal, the cushion's back to 1 again, and QPR, they're going to be right of confidence here, but Rhoda picks up the ball here. Uh, plays it into the path of Adan Yanuzai, who's coming as a substitute. Um, he loses the ball, but it falls back into the path of Ben um, and Fernando. Plays it into Benteke, back into Sebastian Rode, back into Bacale. Bacale gets a bit fortunate there, and that plays, does play the ball into the path of Martin Montoya, the Spanish um, fullback, advancing forward. He does cross the ball into the path of Christian Benteke, and the header is found into the back of the net, and it is 3 3. And this is going to be an absolute classic at Loftus Road here. And Benteke letting his emotion get the better of him there, and. You know, the two goal cushion now, 10 minutes left to go. QPRs looking like they was going to get a goal back and maybe even challenge to get it back on terms. But now it's looking like it's never going to happen. And QPR have let it slip through their fingers yet again through poor defending and just literally not switching off the scoring. And literally, this has happened every single time. And they were, they were really hard to break down, but. You know, as soon as they score, we just literally come and attack them yet again, and it's a great goal from Benteke. And, you know, he, since joining, he has been a bit of a revelation for us. You know, you can't deny that. Um, him and Andy Carroll, two very similar players, and that's his second goal in Cap 1 Cup with 10 minutes left to go. It is looking like this game is wrapped up, and of course it does get wrapped up, and it is a massive 7-5 victory on aggregate for us, as you can see. Confirmation there. Um, great game from both guys, um, all involved, and it is going to bring an end um, to this episode. Obviously, we're going to see that Menez did suffer an injury and be out for eight days, which is gutting. I'm going to leave you guys looking at the league bracket. As you can see, we do go out against Bolton. But as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, hope you have a nice day and enjoy your Easter break off. Thanks, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.